Egypt is home to some of the world's most renowned mummies, which were discovered in Luxor's Valley of the Kings. In a regal procession nicknamed the Pharaoh's Golden Parade, the mummified corpses of 22 ancient Egyptian kings and queens will be paraded through Cairo's streets on Saturday. The ceremony marks the completion of the Ministry of Antiquities' massive overhaul of its archaeological exhibits. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the mummy discoveries that scare scientists. But first, let me tell you a fun fact about mummies. Did you know that it took 70 days for the Egyptians to complete the mummification process? According to the Smithsonian Institute, a professional priest would administer the rite by saying prayers throughout the operation, beginning with the removal of all internal organs. They kept those to either place in jars around the body or embalm and reinsert them inside later. So what do you all think this discovery is about? What kind of things have archaeologists discovered? To answer these questions, let's jump into the video. We take a look at 8 renowned mummies that have been unearthed in Egypt during the last century. The first mummy which we are going to discuss is Ginger. Ginger, named because of its red hair, is the most renowned of 6 naturally mummified remains discovered in shallow tombs in the Egyptian desert in the late 19th century. It was the first mummy to be displayed in public when it was placed on display at the British Museum in 1901, and it has remained there ever since. Ginger, along with the other bodies discovered with it, are the world's earliest known mummies, dating back to around 3400 BC. Artificial mummifications was not yet a popular technique at the time of their deaths, but the warm sand in which they were buried naturally dried and preserved their remains. Next, we will talk about Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut, Egypt's most famous female pharaoh, ruled for over two decades, conducting huge construction projects and creating profitable new trade routes until her death in 1458 BC. In 1902, Howard Carter, an archaeologist, uncovered her royal tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. However, when he uncovered her sarcophagus years later, it was determined to be empty. Carter also discovered KV-60, a second tomb with two coffins, one for Hatshepsut's wet nurse, identified by an inscription on the cover, and one for an unknown female. A team led by Dr. Zahi Hawass set out in 2006 to see if the unidentified woman in KV-60 was the vanished queen herself. A molar teeth discovered in a wooden box carrying Hatshepsut's name was the crucial piece of evidence. When Hawass and his colleagues matched the tooth to a gap in the mummy's upper jaw, it fit perfectly, leading the experts to believe that Hatshepsut had been found. The third mummy on our list is King Tutankhamun. At the age of nine, ancient Egypt's boy king became pharaoh and ruled for around ten years. Tutankhamun, also known as King Tut, became a household name in 1922 when archaeologist Howard Carter discovered his amazing tomb in Egypt's Valley of the Kings. The tomb was loaded with antique goods including jewels, gilded altars, and a solid gold funerary mask, despite multiple apparent grave robbers. The discovery sparked an interest in Egyptology in general and Tutankhamun in particular across the world. Lord Carnarvon, Carter's business partner and financier died from an infected mosquito bite three months after the two uncovered the tomb. His death sparked the legend of the mummy's curse, according to which anybody who attempted to enter King Tut's tomb would face the wrath of the mummy. Ramses II is next on our list. Ramses II, Egypt's most powerful pharaoh, ruled for six decades, 1279 to 1213 BC lived to be over 90 years old and is supposed to have fathered upwards of 100 children according to numerous historians. His body was first entombed in the Valley of the Kings as was traditional for a pharaoh, but it was later relocated by ancient Egyptian priests to avoid looters. Ramses II's mummy, together with that of more than 50 other monarchs and nobles, was found in a hidden royal storehouse at Deir al-Bari in 1881. 
It was flown to Paris in 1974 after archaeologists spotted its declining state and treated it for a fungal illness. Ramses II received an Egyptian passport that identified his occupation as King Deceased before embarking on his voyage. Now we will talk about the Valley of the Golden Mummies. The Baharia Oasis, located in Egypt's western desert, was once a significant agricultural hub and today houses various historic structures including a Greek temple attributed to Alexander the Great. On the grounds of the temple in 1996, an antiquities guard was riding his donkey. The donkey's legs suddenly stumbled into a hole, revealing a gap in the desert floor and the edge of a tomb. The Valley of the Golden Mummies was first excavated by a team of archaeologists led by Dr. Zahi Hawass. Several hundred mummies from Egypt's Greco-Roman period, as well as a treasure trove of antiquities, have been discovered in the first few excursions. The mummy's varied adornments show that the site functioned as a final resting place for people from many walks of life, including affluent merchants, middle-class residents, and destitute locals. Archaeologists say there might be up to 10,000 more mummies buried beneath the sand. Now let's talk about Meritamen. Because incestuous marriages were prevalent in ancient civilizations, Meritamen and her half-sister Bintanith were both daughters and eventually famous royal wives of Pharaoh Ramses the Great. Meritamen was an Amun singer, Hathor priestess, Mut Sistrum player, and Horus dancer, with titles such as Magnificent in the Palace, Lord of the Two Lands Beloved, the one who fills the forecourt with the scent of her fragrance, and Superior of the Harem of Amun-Ra. Meritamen was laid to rest at the Queen's Valley. Her most famous work is the White Queen, a lovely limestone figure located at the Ramesseum, the temple complex her father erected. She is also shown alongside other family members on the walls of Abu Simbel's temple. The next mysterious mummy which we are going to talk about is Thutmose III. Thutmose III was son of Thutmose II, and his mother was Isis a minor harem queen who was one of the king's secondary spouses. Once he was out of the shadow of Hatshepsut, the regent turned pharaoh Thutmose III wasted no time in foraging a reputation for himself. Thutmose III marched with an army of 20,000 warriors to Magid modern-day northern Israel, a place best known by its Greek name, Armageddon, few months after taking power. The annals of Thutmose III are a remarkable chronicle that was written by scribes who traveled with Thutmose III's army and chronicled the facts of the war. By converting Egypt from an inward-looking kingdom to a successful, conquering country, he gained a reputation as a superb military strategist. He was dubbed Napoleon of Egypt by historians. Seti I is last in our list. Menmatre Seti I, or Sethos I in Greece, was the father of Ramses II and the son of Ramses I in Cedar during Egypt's New Kingdom 19th dynasty. Seti marched his army north in the early years of his reign to reclaim Egyptian dignity, which had been shattered during the turbulent years of the late 18th dynasty. He fought in northern Palestine and Syria, and at least one fight was with Muatalis, the Hittite monarch. He then signed a peace pact that may have set the border between the Lebanon and anti-Lebanon mountains near Kadesh on the Orontes River. Seti reinforced Egypt's border, established mines and quarries, dug wells, and repaired or restored temples and shrines that had fallen into disrepair or had been destroyed. In addition, he continued his father's work on the enormous Karnak Temple. Seti's tomb is said to be the most beautiful in the Valley of the Kings. Did these discoveries of mummies scare you as well? Have you heard of any of these before? Do let us know about your thoughts in the comment section below.